George Wellness Solutions, and we are going to be discussing Women's Health 101 today. So I'm glad you're joining us, and we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what it means to stay happy and healthy as women, which means that I'm here to answer some really hard questions. So let me know what kinds of questions that you have, and remember that this is a safe place, so don't be embarrassed to ask any embarrassing women's questions because I want to help answer those and if you think it's embarrassing and you want to know the answer other people are going to want to know that answer as well so don't be shy today if you have questions about anything we're talking about or anything like that or you just have a question about any type of women's health make sure to put it in the comments so I can address that and I'd be happy to chat with you about that even if you needed to talk about it in private as well so we're going to get down to the nitty gritty and start talking about, I don't know, let's talk about PMS, right? The what, the when, the how of PMS, because as women, I'm sure all of us have experienced that at least some point in their life. And if you don't think you have, we'll ask your husbands and see what they say, because I bet they're gonna say, hmm, I think she's, you know, experiencing something not so great at the moment. So let's jump into that a little bit. Okay. Premenstrual syndrome, PMS, is a combination of symptoms that many women get about a week or two before their period. Most women report getting some combination of symptoms such as bloating, mild cramps, headaches, moodiness, all of which is totally normal. It's not fun, but it is normal. If you're getting cramps that are so bad that you're missing work or school or um, not being able to function due to that, that isn't normal. And it might be a good idea to get checked out to figure out what the underlying cause is, okay? Um, too many people, well, not too many, women, let's be real, um, experience a lot throughout their life. And one of the things that we have to do, uh, well, we don't have to do, there are choices, but most women have been on some form of birth control in their life. There's so many options out there, and you know, I understand that sometimes we do that to try to balance our hormones and do things like that, but it also causes a lot of toxins in our body as well, and chemicals and other things that can not be good and wreak havoc on our bodies. So there are ways to help with that. I understand that it's not always a way to be like, I'm not doing anything, right? So today women have more birth control options than ever before. And we're gonna go through a little bit of list of different options that there are. Birth control implant is one of them, which is a small plastic rod, about the size of a matchstick, that's implanted into the inner arm. It's 99% effective, lasts up to five years, and is reversible, okay? Another form is an IUD. It's a small T-shaped device that's placed into the uterus. They have two types, one, that releases hormones and a non-hormonal option available as well. With the hormonal IUD, periods get lighter and can go away completely. With the non-hormonal, periods may get heavier but can protect from pregnancy up to 12 years. IUDs are 99% effective and last between three and 12 years, depending on which kind you get, and they're reversible. Another form of birth control is a birth control shot which is an injection that you get every three months. They're 94% effective. Um, the, another one would be a vaginal ring, which is a small flexible ring that prevents pregnancy by releasing hormones into your body. Once a month, the ring is placed into the vagina at home and the vaginal lining absorbs the hormones. These are 91% effective. And of course, the most popular is the pill. Right? Most women have been on the pill or a form of that at least at some point in their life. Um, so, but it's also important to know that even if you're taking the pill, you want to make sure that you're using condoms and practicing safe sex so you're not having other issues down the road, right? So through, with all these different birth control pills and different options, you know, you are putting hormones into your body and not all of them they're not produced naturally in your body. So with the different synthetics and things like that, you know, you have to be careful and there's things that you can do to help that. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more. 
So, do you experience pain with your period? We're going to talk about that. Cramps affect about half of all menstruators. But despite how common they are, folks don't really know how to tell what's normal and what's not normal. So if you're experiencing any of the following symptoms, you should check with a healthcare specialist. Pain that lasts more than two or three days, pelvic pain um, at times besides your period, over-the-counter pain medications aren't offering any relief, you're calling off work regularly due to the pain, or you're worried that something's just not right. You know, as women, most of the time we're paying attention to our bodies and saying, something's not right here, I need to get this checked out. So if your cramps are making it difficult for you to go to work every day, don't just accept you're fine from your doctor. Because a lot of times they're like, oh, well you're just stressed, um, you're doing so much, you're fine, I don't see anything wrong. That's not okay. There's, you shouldn't be experiencing things like that. So here at Shores Wellness Solutions, we get to the root cause of that. You know, if you're going to all these doctors and they're telling you, oh, you're fine, the pain is just in your head, I'm running all these tests, I'm not finding anything wrong, we will check you in a different way to see what that underlying cause is of all those pains that you're experiencing. We, get, we don't look at what your symptoms are, but we find what the root cause is so we can correct those symptoms to help them go away. So we'd be happy to consult with you if you're experiencing that to help you feel your best and understand what is causing these pains and things that you don't want to be experiencing. So one reason you may be experiencing some of the pains too would be because of an ovarian cyst. So we'll talk about that for a minute. Sometimes a fluid-filled sac called a cyst can develop on the ovaries. Most of these cysts are benign, painless, and cause no symptoms. However, sometimes it can appear, um, you can get symptoms as the cyst grows and gets bigger. So some of the symptoms of having an ovarian cyst includes abdominal bloating and swelling, painful bowel movements, painful intercourse, pelvic pain before or after your menstrual cycle, pain in the lower back and thighs, breast tenderness, nausea and vomiting, faintness, dizziness, can run a fever, and these symptoms can indicate that a cyst has ruptured or that the ovary has shifted in a wrong way. Cysts cannot be prevented, but routine gynecological exams can detect cysts early on and save you from invasive surgeries to remove them. Um, that'll also save you from the risk of infertility and other complications. But Please know if you do suffer from cysts or you've had cysts in the past, there are whole food supplements that can help to diminish the cysts and help to lessen their return. So reach out to us again if cysts are something that you've been suffering with because there are things that we can do to help prevent them from coming back and to help prevent you from getting them in the first place. So next we're gonna talk about vaginal discharge. What's normal and what isn't? Vaginal discharge is something no one really likes to talk about, right? We should all know about it though because we need to know what's normal and what isn't normal. So let's, let's go through a couple different scenarios and let you know what's normal, what isn't normal. So thick white discharge represents normal discharge. Um, it should be clear to milky in color and can vary in consistency from watery to mucus-like. The smell should be very mild. Yellow or um, green discharge is abnormal and it should be, it's usually a sign of a bacterial infection or an STI. Brown discharge may be caused by irregular period cycles. If it keeps appearing, it could be a sign of a serious uterine or cervical issues. And you want to talk to your gynecologist if you're experiencing that. Very thick, white, chunky discharge is likely a yeast infection. Okay, So accompanying symptoms include itching, redness, irritation, and burning. So those are some of the different forms of discharge and what's normal and what isn't normal. So we're going to talk about preventing some infections now. 
there are two most common infections that women face are a urinary tract infection and a yeast infection. I'm sure none of you women out there have had either of those, right? Well, let's talk about a UTI starts off as a constant feeling of the need to pee. If it's not treated with lots of water to flush out the bacteria buildup, the infection can spread to the kidneys and eventually the blood, causing severe health issues. If you feel a UTI coming on, you need to get tested. Okay? We help with lots of women in our office naturally without the use of antibiotics to get rid of a UTI. So I know a lot of times we talk like the only way to get rid of it is with an antibiotic. Um, it's one option, but by taking the antibiotic, now you're screwing up your digestive tract and you have to do other things to try to correct that as well. There are some natural ways, some whole food supplements that you can take that are going to help flush out that UTI. So if you have any questions about that, please make sure you ask us about it. We'd be happy to help you with that. Uh, to prevent a UTI in the first place, it's very important to pee after any sexual intercourse. The urinary tract on women is much shorter than it is on men, and so bacteria can travel up much easier and cause an infection. I know it sounds very unromantic, but if you make a routine to run to the bathroom afterwards, you're gonna thank yourself later, okay? For yeast infections, the best thing you can do is cut back on your sugar. And I know no one probably wants to hear that, but if you think about baking a loaf of bread or making pizza dough, right? When you're mixing the ingredients, you add sugar to the yeast and warm water to make it rise and activate it. A warm, moist environment, a little bit of yeast, and a very sugary diet leads to a terrible yeast infection. It's science, guys. So, if you suffer from a lot of yeast infections, you gotta cut out that sugar. It's gonna help you to not have them coming back and you're basically making a concoction in your system that's causing those yeast infections. So it's really important to cut out the sugar if you're wanting to prevent a yeast infection. So let's talk a little bit about probiotics. All of us, not all of us, most of us have been on an antibiotic before, right? because of an infection or other things. So you wanna make sure that you balance out the bacteria and yeast, okay? And the best way to balance that is with a probiotic. So we're gonna talk a little more about probiotics. Probiotics are important to take, especially if you've been on antibiotics at all, you should be on a probiotic. Um, they just could, well, let's go back for a second. If you're on an antibiotic, what does it do? It doesn't just get rid of the bacteria that you want it to get rid of. It gets rid of all the bacteria. So now you've destroyed everything, so you don't even have the good bacteria in your gut. So you'll want some help to restore the good bacteria that can keep you healthy and balanced. Here in our office, we use standard process because they're whole food supplements and the whole complex, not just a fragment of what is needed. There are several probiotics depending on what your needs are. So if you're thinking you need to start supplementing with a probiotic because of taking lots of antibiotics or you just don't feel right in the gut, um, just ask us. We'd be happy to help you out which probiotics would be best for you. But two of my favorite are ProSymbiotic, which supports gut flora, helps to maintain bowel consistency and regularity, and can help improve digestion and absorption, and supports the GI immune health. It's a great product to use in addition to taking an antibiotic. So if you're on an antibiotic, the antibiotic will do its job, but the probiotic will put the good bacteria back into your gut. My second is Zymex, which also helps with candida. So if you're suffering from that extra candida from sugar. It helps with GI tract toxicity, toxemia, and a loss of intestinal flora, but it's also a good one in conjunction with an antibiotic if you do have to take one. So let's talk a little bit about the dangers of sugar since we're talking about infections, how to prevent them. Studies have found that the average woman eats 70 pounds of sugar a year. Sugar is hidden in lots of things that we eat. 
which means that most of us are eating way more sugar than our bodies are meant to handle. Uh, some argue very toxic levels, so you need to pay attention to that. From yogurt, coffee in the morning, to granola bars throughout the day, and a drink during happy hour, sugar finds sneaky ways of getting into our gut and wreaking havoc. Sugar causes inflammation, weight gain, energy depletion, and contributes to the progression of Alzheimer's disease various types of cancer, heart disease, and liver disease. So the recommended limit for added sugar is six teaspoons or 24 grams a day. Study your food labels, because here are some numbers that you're gonna be like, oh, I didn't realize. Sample, barbecue sauce, two table tablespoons of barbecue sauce has 15 grams of sugar in it. So two tablespoons of barbecue sauce, you've already exceeded your limit of sugar that you should even be consuming. Uh, flavored yogurt has 31 grams. So you have that little cup of yogurt in the morning that has flavoring in it, and you've already exceeded more sugar than you're supposed to have for an entire day. So do that along with sodas, and we have good barbecue, we had a couple sodas, we had a piece of cake because someone brought this wonderful thing, and you wonder why you're getting these infections, okay? So especially if you're more prone to it. So you gotta be careful with the sugar intake and start paying attention to where you're getting your sugar from and how much you're consuming. So now we've talked about nitty gritty stuff, we're talking about PMS, discharge, all these crazy things, infections, how to prevent it. Let's talk about how to take care of you as a woman because let's be real, if we're not taking care of ourselves, we can't take care of anyone else. And I know, preaching to the choir here, right? Because we don't always take care of ourselves. We're worrying about all these other things and we tend to put ourselves last because we gotta get the kids to school, we gotta do our job, we gotta get this done, all of that. But it's really important to take care of yourself as well. And so we're gonna talk about a few ways to take care of yourself. The first thing is, what is your morning routine? The way you start your day will dictate how the rest of your day goes. So it's important to create a routine that inspires you to be productive. One of the best ways to get in the right headspace to face your day is with a few minutes of reflection or meditation. It doesn't have to be more than a few minutes and you can get started as soon as you wake up. Just sit comfortably, think about what you want to accomplish that day, and then set an intention. Be strong, be kind, be brave. Send some positive energy out with that thought so you can start your day thinking, this is what I'm wanting, this is what I'm wanting out of my day, right? If you're not very good at sitting quietly, I can relate to that, but think these thoughts while moving. Do some gentle stretches, squats, you can do jumping jacks. If you like to go for a walk, take a nice walk and think about what you're gonna be doing for that day. Set your intentions so you can start your morning out um, on a positive note. Another thing that's important is your nighttime routine. You know, you have all this commotion and craziness that happens throughout the day. You wanna end your day on a right note by creating a nighttime routine that sets your mind to rest and prepares you for a good night's sleep. Here's a few tips that you can consider. Switch from the overhead lights, these big bright lights like we've got up here. You wanna put on a lamp, turn the lights down so you know that your body, you're telling your brain, hey, it's time to start toning things down, okay? Um, teach your brain that it's time to wind down by getting into the habit of preparing a warm bed beverage before you go to sleep. Hot tea, hot water with lemon or ginger are great options because the warmth also helps with digestion before you go to bed. Try taking a hot shower or a bath because your body temperature naturally dips at night. So when you submerge yourself in warm water, your temperature rises and the cool down period immediately afterwards relaxes you. So now you're feeling calm and relaxed, getting ready for bed. You can anoint yourself with relaxing scents like lavender, chamomile before bed, um, make a linen spray. Obviously I like to use essential oils. We use doTERRA essential oils and you can make a blend together, spritz it on yourself, just roll it on. I also like to put it in the diffuser before you go to bed. Put something relaxing like serenity or lavender. If you're having breathing issues, you can throw some breathe in there and just let it run all night. So it helps you to relax, keep you calm, breathe well and have a good night's sleep because it's very important. 
another thing. Let's talk about loving our bodies, right? Social media, advertisements, television, and movies can all make us feel that our bodies aren't good enough, right? You watch all these crazy things. Uh, it can lead to unhealthy eating habits, dangerous dieting, and a, and a very negative mental state. So some things to combat these crazy thoughts is recreate your social media. It's kind of funny today. I actually, uh, one of my good friends was posting about social media, and especially right now, all this craziness that's going on. There's so many negative things going on and people arguing and fighting. Recreate your space, you know? You're choosing if you wanna see those things. So you don't have to unfriend people, but you can unfollow a lot of people because when you unfollow someone, it takes them off of your feet. So if you're seeing lots of negativity, start unfollowing, get yourself out of some of the groups that you don't want to see and only follow the people that, you know, brings you inspiration and helps you feel better. Um, it's an easy thing to do, and if you decide you want to check in on someone, you can always go to their feed and check that out, but you really want to make sure that you're paying attention to the things that inspire you, because otherwise it can drain you and just set your day off for very negativity. If you're having a bad day, great. just give yourself some self-love mantras, you know, throw away clothes that don't fit you anymore. Keeping them around can act as a negative reminder of trying to measure up to something you used to be. Donate them, get rid of those things. Get things that make you feel good. When you put them on, you should feel good in the clothes that you're wearing. If you don't feel good with it, get rid of it, you know? Um, let's talk about dealing with anxiety for a moment. Uh, especially in, with everything going on right now, I think there's a lot of people who have been dealing with anxiety and anxiety affects millions of people and trying to keep it under control can be very difficult. So depending on how severe your anxiety is, there are different tactics that you can try. If you have mild anxiety that crops up every once in a while, try these tips. You can separate yourself from what you're doing, move elsewhere to a different physical space and just breathe deeply for a whole minute. You know, just clearing your mind for a moment, taking a deep breath, really long, really slow for a moment. When you're feeling anxious, take a moment to think about it, what it is that was making you feel worried. Tell someone about it. You can, you know, it's okay to say, oh, I'm sorry if I feel a little distracted today. I don't know, I think I'm worried about this. It's taking up a lot of headspace right now. Don't take it personally if I'm out of my element. It's okay to tell people what's going on it's better than you just ignoring them all day and they're like, oh my gosh, this person's mad at me or what's happening. Let them know, hey, you know, something's going on right now. This is what I'm struggling with. Helps to get it out and it helps you to feel better. If nothing else, you can write it out. Put your thoughts out, get them out of your head, put them on paper, tell someone. It can be very overwhelming. Take a few minutes to jot it down, get it out of your head so you can process your thoughts. It's another way of doing that. And self-care. We talked a little bit about that, but it refers to the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and health during times of stress. Here are some ways to practice some self-care. Plan out your meals for the week. I know we're all crazy and stressed or whatever, but if you've already planned out and you've prepared what you're going to eat for the week, it makes it a lot easier than just reaching for that bag of chips or ice cream or whatever it is that is your crutch, if you have some nice healthy choices planned out ahead of time, it makes it easier and you can include the nutritious foods and save money from being tempted to run through the drive through and eating things that aren't going to make you feel any better. Take a power nap if you can. 20 minutes is the prime number. Just, I know you can't do it if you're at work, maybe. Maybe I could sneak into the cell room later if nobody's looking. I'll have to See who's around, right? No, I'm just joking. Anyway, just take a minute to just take a breather when you can. I know sometimes you can't because you have a crazy day, but if you have that opportunity, don't feel guilty on a Saturday that you're laying around and you're taking a 20 minute power nap. It's okay, you need it for your well-being. Take time with your friends, go for a walk. Breathing in the fresh air, getting a little bit of exercise is always a great way to clear your head make you feel better and a great way to take care of yourself. This is a hard one. 
Learning to say no. Do you feel like you're a little bit of a people pleaser? A lot of us women tend to be people pleasers and we say yes to everything and then we're like, oh my gosh, my schedule's so crazy. I can't do all the things, right? And then you get burned out, you get stressed. No, it's okay to say no. You know, I know it's easier to be like, oh yeah, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that, right? You don't want to let people down, you want to help everyone, but it's really important sometimes to say no, especially if it's not for your better good. So keep your responses simple. Remember that you're not asking permission to say no, okay? Um, you can always let people know, hey, you know what? I really appreciate you inviting me to this. I am not gonna be able to do that. And it's okay, it is okay to say no. And the last thing we're gonna talk about, learning to put yourself first. You're well aware of the metaphor, put the oxygen mask on yourself first, but for some reason, something holds you back from taking care of your own needs. We're always helping everyone else first, but you have to remember, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of other people. If you're sick and run down, you can't help anyone else. So maybe you're afraid if you put yourself first, people will stop liking you, or you don't feel worthy of self-love or self-care. If this sounds familiar, you should consider that you're not being selfish by putting yourself first. On the contrary, caring for yourself helps you to be more productive, happier, more energetic, less fearful, less stressed, less resentful, and less depressed. Set aside time each day to do something that you want to do. Make yourself a priority and invest in things that keep you healthy and happy. Would you buy something nice for your friend? Buy it for yourself. Would you cook a nice meal for a loved one? Cook one for yourself, even if you're the only one home. Cook one for yourself, you matter. We forget to take time to do the same things for ourselves that we do for other people. Another big one that's hard for a lot of women is to learn to ask for help when needed. I don't ask for help much. I pretty much feel like I can do everything, right? Don't we all women? But it is important to ask for help when needed uh, because really we can't do everything. And when you work with other people to help you out, you're gonna get much better results and be happier in the process. If people start to get angry with your new actions because we're saying no, or we're putting ourselves first, it's because there's a discrepancy gap between how we're behaving and how, the, how others want us to behave or how they expect us to behave because that's what they're used to. If you're true to yourself, those who love you will support you and you're pushed to care for yourself. People who aren't worthy of being in your life will prefer you to be unhealthy and unhappy. Rather, you know, you want people who want you to be healthy and happy, so, the right people will be in your life. Take care of yourself, it's really, really important. And embrace yourself for who you are. As women, we're often bullied by society to fit into a particular mold. We feel like we're supposed to be a certain shape, have smooth skin, wear the right clothes, act the right way, eat the right things, but no one can fit into all those expectations and be happy, no one. So don't be fooled into thinking that you're not good enough just because you don't fit into society's mold. You were here as I cried. Look at that. I was trying to not do that. Oh my gosh. Anyhow, you were here for a reason. And of course, I don't listen to, I can't ever remember all the numbers, but I was listening to um, a motivational speaker today. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm getting emotional. Anyhow, I was listening to, um, an inspirational speaker this morning, starting my day, right? I was practicing, hey, this is great things. I listen to positive things before I start my day. And I can't remember the number. It was talking about how you being born is, you know, she was doing the science, right? And saying, you know, how people don't feel like they matter and this and that. And so she, I can't remember, but when you do all the math about the right, making a perfect you, right? So you take, Two different people and you have to have you know intercourse so many times before that person gets born and the egg has to meet the sperm and all these things right it's like one in 400 billion chances for you to become you you matter you were put on this earth for a reason 
So I'm gonna get past that, but anyway, you matter. So make sure you take care of yourself, okay? All right, let's go back into everything we've talked about. I think on that note, now that I got all blubbery here for a moment, I just want you to remember, it's very important to take care of yourself. We as women are not meant to suffer from hot flashes, PMS, cramps, bloating, low self-esteem, depression, insomnia, all these things. Most of these symptoms are highly influenced by our environment. Changing a few habits, altering your diet, improving your lifestyle, and taking a few whole food supplements to balance things out that you're not providing for yourself, altering your diet, improving your lifestyle, all of those things are great things to help take care of you. There needs to be a whole body approach that addresses the underlying imbalances and causes. There's a lot of things you can do. If you're struggling with anything that we've discussed today, you just need someone to chat with, you need to talk to somebody, you have all these things and you're not sure where to begin, where to start, I'd be happy to chat with you. Come on in, um, schedule a consultation at our expense so we can just see what's going on with you. We want to help you so you can feel your best self. All right, guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule and joining me to learn a little more about Women's Health 101. I thank you very much. Um, like I said, um, I got someone making faces at me in the background, but anyway, thank you again. Um, if you have questions, put it in the comments, reach out, give us a call, and remember, I'm Amy from Shores Wellness Solutions, and I want to be your inspiration for healthy living. Bye, guys.